Jennifer Omidvar, please. Thank you, Chair. I'm reminded of a time in 2016 when uh, my uh, our uh, family of uh, 12 Syrian refugees that we had sponsored arrived, eight of them were children. Their teeth were shot through completely because apparently too much candy is distributed in the camps. And I can tell you that the $650 per child would have made a huge difference. But instead, we had to rely on the volunteer spirit of the dental community. So I, I, I welcome this benefit from lived experience, in a sense. My question, though, is to the officials from the CRA, and it, can, it is about the 10 to 12 percent of Canadians who do not file an income tax return. Could you describe your get-ready strategy for us, and could you tell us whether you have indicators and benchmarks for performance built into the strategy so that at the so that you can evaluate whether or not the strategy was successful and whether you have a goal in mind for um, the percentage of Canadians who will uh, file their income tax return uh, of this 10, and 10 to 12 percent that do not. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for the, for the question. Um, with respect to the Get Ready campaign, you, uh, you're, it, it's a campaign that was launched. It was available on the Canada.ca website. It was launched the day the bill was tabled or following the tabling of the bill in Parliament. Uh, so that is a bill, or pardon me, that is a campaign that's explaining to citizens what they need to do now. So there's two main channels for individuals to access these benefits. It would be either through um, doing so through the secure portal, the CRA My Account, or alternatively through uh, My Service Canada account. They can link through that channel. Uh, there, so online, there's also an opportunity for individuals to apply by telephone. So the Get Ready campaign lays out the, uh, you know, it encourages individuals to sign up for a My Account if they don't currently have a My Account and to sign up for a direct deposit if they don't currently have direct deposit. If I could just speak just very briefly with respect to take-up rates, as my colleague um, Lynn Thompson made reference to, um, the, the, the dental benefit is anchored in many of the controls and the systems that exist for the, the Canada Child Benefit. And the, the vast majority of individuals who are in receipt of the Canada Child Benefit uh, currently have a My Account. So they have online access to their account and the vast majority as well are signed up for direct deposit. So we're quite confident that when, if, if this legislation um, is passed in Parliament and receives royal assent, we're quite confident that when the program launches, that the individuals who are applying to the dental program will be able to do so fairly seamlessly. So just, just think that's an important piece for you to know. As far as other things that we're doing in the, the Canada Revenue Agency to help people get prepared, we are looking at a, 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 a mail-out campaign uh, that could be used. We're also leveraging our partners in the Community Volunteer Income Tax Program to get the message out. So we're looking at lots of different ways to make sure citizens are aware of this new program working closely with our colleagues in Health Canada in that regard. I'd also like to mention, you talk about the non-filer rate. One thing that I think is important for this committee to know is that you know, for the past several years, going back at least until 2014, um, the Canada Revenue Agency has been working to identify individuals who aren't filing taxes and not simply those who aren't filing taxes that would um, you know, that, that would, would clearly be in a position where they owe the Canada Revenue Agency money, but we've been focusing on individuals who are in the lower and modest income levels who would be, um, who, who are not availing themselves of the benefits and credits to which they're entitled. So this is a program that we're continuing. We've continued it throughout the pandemic. And as a result of these efforts, we have seen, a, we continue to see an increase in the number of individuals uh, who are availing themselves of benefits and credits. And if I may give you an example from 2020, um, there was $40 million paid out in refunds to individuals who otherwise uh, wouldn't have been able to uh, access these benefits. For the Canada Child Benefit, there's over $15 million in benefits paid out. So those efforts that the Canada Revenue Agency um, has undertaken for the past several years is helping identify those particularly in the vulnerable sector who are not accessing benefits and credits. Thank you. Uh, there was one positive outcome of the COVID crisis. It is that more people are now filing their income tax returns because people are generally more aware that that's the trigger for benefits.
Uh, Madam Pranky. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Pardon me, Mr. Chair. I, I just want, want to understand the question. I wondered whether you can um, assign the credit for the increased rate of tax filings to your efforts or to the increased awareness to the COVID crisis that benefits are generated from filing income tax returns? Uh, thank you for the question, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I, would, I would speculate here, but I would, I would speculate that it's a, likely a combination of both. You're absolutely correct in that there's a requirement. These programs are rooted in our requirement to validate income and, and uh, individuals need to have filed a tax return in order to validate income. The, uh, one item I'd like to point out is unlike, uh, unlike the early COVID programs, both the, the Canada Dental Program and the Canada Housing Program uh, require that there be a 2021 tax return on file. It's a, a firm time frame. It's not a sliding window, which was the case with the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. So, you know, with respect to validation integrity, there will there is a requirement to peg uh, eligibility as uh, against income that's been reported as as one of the factors. But there are many comp many many matters or many initiatives that uh, help increase filing rates across the country. 